Welcome to Launch Code, a premier business podcast, starring Evan Hafer, Matt Best, and Jared Taylor. Hello. Oh, what? It just you're, sounds... You're not excited? No, it just sounds so overly enthusiastic. Animated. Well, yeah. this is our first launch code in the new studio. Oh, it is nice. Yeah. Yeah, and you sound really good right now, so it's like, I'm excited. Yeah. I I love it. I love the fact that I can look at Dave. And you can tell him he's fired to his face? This is launch code, so I don't fire him on launch oh, code. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know? Dave does not get fired on launch nope. code. Mm-mm. He doesn't. He look at him. He looks relieved. He's safe. He does. He's safe for 25 minutes. He took your old pilot headset and modified it so he could get behind his command module over there and <laughs> fly this podcast. Uh, he's doing a good job of it, though. Yeah. So today we have Tom Davin, the CEO of 511. Uh, if you 511 did, haven't Tactical. listened to it. Yeah, yeah. 511 Tactical. I apologize. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, we also did an episode with him two years ago. Uh, Dave will pull the number, and he'll have it in the comments when we post. Yeah, Tom's was like about a year ago. A year ago? His. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In Salt he was Lake. one of our first, yeah. yeah. In the old studio. It's great to be here for the maiden voyage. Right? Yeah. yeah. That and we're going to cool. with this bottle of champagne you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to break it on the front of the table. A bottle of champagne and break it in this old college that we bought. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> it, is not, it is funny when you think about it. Like, wait, what did you guys do? We bought a college. We bought an old college. <laughs> I mean, we're not running out of whiteboards. We're not or running, projector stands or old printers or a library full of crappy books. Yeah, I know that library was pretty funny. Yeah. Going to rebuild the nursing station we just saw, JT. Yeah, yeah, I think we should. I think we should turn that into a doctor set because there's a lot of doctor <laughs> videos that we could do. Yeah, well, those are mainly your videos. <laughs> um, so, Tom, two years, a lot has happened with. 511s, or I guess a year, I apologize, 511 Tactical in the last year. What's the, 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 the big initiatives? Kind of tell us what you guys have been up to. Big initiatives at 511 over the last year. Or so one, we're always working on culture. And uh, just like for Black Rifle, hiring veterans is a key priority. And we've got about 400 some odd retail employees. And I'll talk about retail in a second. But we just did a survey, and about 30% of our in-store teams are military veterans. It's amazing. And uh, we're just going to keep pushing that one hard. We'd like to get it up to 40 or 45%. So if you're a veteran and you see a 511 store near you, drive on over and introduce yourself. The retail stores were up to 37. Our last store was St. Louis. That popped a week ago Friday. Wow. And uh, we'll be... Uh, we head down to Austin, which opened a couple of weeks ago. We do a stealth opening. We open the store for two, three, maybe four weeks, and then we do a big grand opening. Mm-hmm. That'll be Saturday in Austin this weekend. Is that so, the, the Saturday is the grand opening or the stealth opening? The grand opening. Grand opening. Oh, Got that it. means okay. anybody that's close to Austin, you guys can go to this. Yeah. Yeah? Big yeah. time. 10 o'clock, there'll be a door breaching because we don't do ribbon cuttings. We do door <laughs> breaching. Nice. That's amazing. That's yes, great. I've been to quite a few of 511 Grand Openings, and they are fun. We're trying to do explosive door breaching, but I haven't gotten signed off from EOD yet. <laughs> so retail stores be number two. Number three is new product. So we've got all sorts of product dropping for fall. You know, ironically, fall in the apparel and gear business begins in July. So we've got new boots, new pants. We've got an edge chino that's just rocking it, a whole bunch of new tops like the one I'm wearing. It's an aerial shirt with dissolving yarn. I want to say invisible ink, but it's dissolving yarn. Dissolving yarn. Don't ask me what solvent they use, but they weave the shirt, then they hit it with some sort of reactor, a reagent material, and it makes the holes come out in the shirt. So it's highly breathable. The beauty of it is you can't quite see through it. I know yeah. that disappoints you, JT. I know. Yeah, I was, I was looking. I know. We were both looking yeah, at I you. Mean, you see any you, details there. You're keeping yourself in tip-top shape. <laughs> hmm? So 37 stores. How long is that taking you? We're about year three in the rollout. This year, we're going to open a total of 21. So this is our big year. So we mm-hmm. started the year um, with, I think, 28. 
Uh, up to 37 now, we'll wrap uh, a total of 48, 49, depending on how the Q4 season ends up for us. But we're basically moving into every state in the nation. Uh, I think I mentioned Missouri and Austin, Texas, wow. St. Louis, Missouri, Austin, Texas were recent. We're basically going anywhere there are lots of people. Interesting. That's been the beauty of the model. Uh -huh. We don't need just people who love guns or people who are our traditional 511 customers, military, police, fire. We found if there's density, the stores do incredibly well. Well, I'll be honest, Tom. Like 511s now, since I, since we've been involved with you guys, like it becomes a staple in you guys have things that nobody else has. And now it's it's almost like I land somewhere or I'm even at home and it's like I got to hit the 511 store because I want this thing that I know you guys have. Right. Yeah. And there's no other stores that have that type of stuff where you can go in and get kind of, you know, when we were heading up to Idaho, uh, the first time to do the fishing trip with Rusty, it was like I, I stopped at 511 to get, you know, waterproof case for phone and wallet and things like that, but also like some carabiners and other things that I would need for for this trip. And it's like there's no other place that you can just walk in and get that assortment of stuff in one spot. We want you to come in and kit out for whatever your mission happens to be. Could be preparing for the next fire in the state of California, or could be preparing for that vacation where you just need to load up on gear. So you're just preparing. What's the tagline? The tag Always line. be ready. Always be ready. There we go. We love it. We, tra <laughs> yeah. we trademark that. We were shocked. This I know. About four years ago, I said, "How about always be ready?" Now it's not available. No, wait, it is available. Oh, wow. How crazy is that? That's great, So we though. trademarked it. Well, we trademarked America's Coffee. We, did, yeah. we thought for sure that that was taken. Nope, wasn't taken. <laughs> so <laughs> the lesson there is not all the good ideas are taken. Yeah, but we're trying to monopolize them just as fast as we can. Um, I, 37 stores, I've got a lot of questions around this, which is how long did it take you, did did... I guess, did 511 already have the optic or the desire to open up stores before you came along? They did. No, no not at all. They didn't. So I'm how not, long did I it take you to I gave Ed, Evan a head fake, like, yes, they did <laughs> not. No, uh, when I joined the board, and I think we may have touched on this in the first podcast, my predecessor had done a deal with a lawyer who'd owned a gun range in Fresno, California. And this lawyer took on basically consignment about half a million dollars worth of product, made it essentially a cop shop, but had the, the logo and the tagline out front. Mm -hmm. So it was basically a dedicated 5-11 store, mostly though for professionals. He ended up not paying us. I took the store over in 2012. My board and my investors begged me not to be in the retail business because just like Black Rifle going to the coffee shop business, it's hard. It's real estate intensive. You got leases, you got build outs, you got to hire people, you got to deal with managing a service component. It's just a tough business. And retail, as you know, most people are getting out of retail. Yeah. Because the thought is everybody's going to buy all their stuff online, which we know won't happen. Right. But after my board said, don't do it, we kept the store. And then we really started our program in 14 with two stores, a couple more stores in 50. And once we knew it was viable, the investors decide to sell the company. Okay. But it's really been my vision along with Jeff Roberts, our head of retail. And really all we do, shocking, is just listen to customers and give them what they want. And people told us we want to see the entire 511 catalog in a retail environment with people who are friendly and know what they're talking about. And that goes into why, you know, this is a good option for any, you know, four, six-year military veterans out there because you're going to have fun in that setting. You know the mm -hmm. stuff. Right. You know about boots, you know about bags and backpacks and pouches and things like that. So you can talk about it like you're an expert. Which you probably are. Yeah. And if you're not, you ask the customers questions because a lot of them are experts and they'll educate right. our staff from time to time. So what's been your biggest obstacle, I guess, in the, the what since 2012 in putting these forward? And then I guess in, this is your big year. So Right. Yeah, good question because there are always obstacles, mm -hmm. but the toughest one when you're building out a physical space is you've got to get the real estate component right. So I'd like to say you're in the real estate business first, you're in the people business second, you're in the retail business third. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find the perfect site. 
we're only taking down a space of about 5,000 square feet, not very large by most standards. And so to find a 5,000 square foot space on a major freeway, great visibility, great access with signage that doesn't cost a lot, that's a bit of a challenge. So it takes a while. We've got a whole team of deal makers. Mm -hmm. They do nothing but travel the country knocking on doors and talking to brokers. It's a really tough job. So is it 511 uh, employees, or did you contract this out or hire consultants? Or? We've got a handful. It's like our own special forces mm -hmm. A team that go out and do nothing but represent 511 looking wow. at deals. And they talk to brokers. But, of course, you're trying to free up really high-quality remnant space at a low price because we're not going into malls. I think we all know how difficult it is to survive in malls with traffic declining, you know, year right. after year in the malls. So we're not willing to pay the premium to be in a mall. Right. So we've got to be in a place where people see the store, drive by, and say, "Huh, I, I don't know exactly what that is, but it looks interesting." I'm yeah, I don't over. see you guys being very successful in a mall. Our, your type of customer doesn't right. doesn't go to a mall. Right. <laughs> so we're kind of destination, which means people have to see us or know we're there. Right. The beauty of the model is a typical retail environment. If you've got a traffic counter of people crossing the threshold, typically you're going to see 8 to maybe 12% conversion rate. So of 100 wow. people who walk in, 8 to 12 will buy. Mm -hmm. Our conversion rate is 40%, which is crazy. Yeah, it, that's insane. Now, if you flip it around, it's because most people are like JT. When they're coming in, they're coming in to buy. Uh, that's the thing. List. I mean, it's colorful. It's exciting. I always walk out with something I didn't think I needed. I mean, <laughs> the last time I was in there, I bought three of the cell phone backers that you right. that you guys carry. Like, because I was like, oh, I need extras of these. <laughs> and you're rocking the shorts today. The yes, Apex I love shorts. these shorts. These are your new your new shorts. What are these ones called? Apex. Apex. Yeah. Oh, I love them. They somehow make your calves look more muscular. I can't figure that out. <laughs> Could be that he's working out again. He's doing the donkey calf raises, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Does, but we do a lot of buddy assisted calf raises around here yeah and people look at us weird but we get them done so so the real estate side is tough because you can find a great location then you got to make the deal and right are you, you buying any of your stores or are you leasing we're 100%? leasing them all okay yeah because we want to put our capital into more retail build outs not owning more real estate Probably. and having fewer yeah. stores so that's always a pain in the neck and often you'll have an LOI which is a letter of intent which in most business settings, an LOI means you're going to have a contract, you've agreed right. to a deal. In real estate, it means you're going to negotiate. So right. the LOI really is not binding. You have to get to a contract and a fully executed lease, and that can take six or seven months in a worst-case scenario. Hopefully it's only a month. Then you got to build it out, get your permits, et cetera. It's a crazy thing. People don't like money these days in nah. the U.S. It's, it's weird. <laughs> oh, you want to lease my building? Right. We're going to wait. We're going to wait eight months for that. <laughs> in some cases, you've got an older individual owns a building and they just don't care. Really? They're in no hurry. Right. They're just like, like whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well. And internationally, so you guys, how many stores do you guys have uh, in the U.S.? Well, 37 are in the U.S. Oh, that's right. We have one store in Sydney, Australia. We opened a new store in Germany in the town of. Hamburg or Hamburg, depending mm -hmm. on how one likes to pronounce it, that opened last Friday on the 20th of July. So that was our first store in Europe that we own. We've got oh, but you have you have other 511 stores that are overseas. Now, how, how does that relationship play out? That would be a license deal. So we give a shop owner a license to put 511 on the door as long okay. as they carry a certain percentage of 511 product and market the brand properly. And a good example of that is... Here in San Antonio, we've got a local partner, Lance Rousey, mm -hmm. who's about to open a store in Alamo Heights, and he's already got one store here. He's a licensee. We call him a partner. Yeah. Now, had I known you guys were going to come here, I would have had a company-owned store here, but you yeah. didn't tell me that two years ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm telling him we need another one out by Lackland, though. There's, it's, it's, there's still a spot there. You mean it for 511? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'd crush over there. Do you have one in Boise yet? We do not. It's yeah. on the list. There we go. See, we can partner on that one. We could. Yes. Uh, the, we, I guess we have a be our head, headquarters building yeah. plus five eleven <laughs> store summer headquarters yeah, for summer Black HQ. Rifle. Yeah, I think I think that's, that's what a, we're doing. <laughs> with a stream right up back. There's a stream. And there's Boise River right there. Right. It's beautiful. I mean, it's. I know that you're partially Utah, but I can go north. You could. Yeah. All you right. can tempt me up there. I could. I could Certainly for a week or two at a yeah. time. Yeah. 
Well, the fishing's much better in Idaho than it is in Utah. Just Damn. FYI. I didn't know that. So where do you see this going? Like how many of these are you going to open? In terms of total number, we have not done the full-on corporate penetration study, but we'll get to 100 within wow. probably three years. Okay. And the goal is to have in every major city like a Dallas or a Houston, somewhere between three and five. Right. We already have three in Houston, two in Dallas. So cities like that, yeah, if you extrapolate around the U.S., we can get to 100 pretty easily. Right. question then is do we need to have a smaller footprint to go urban? Do we need more pop-up shops? Should we do a much larger destination store, kind of think Bass Pro Shop. Yeah. You're yeah. driving a little further to go out, and it's a much bigger experience that may be attached to a gun range, an archery range, right. something else got kind of a real Black Rifle experience. Coffee Shop. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> a very large Black Rifle Coffee Shop. Uh, I got a question. Like, So you've, in the last 20 years, have held numerous big positions in major brands. Like, Your position here at 5'11 now is this – are you having like a blast? Like, is this like, I'm finally home and I want to keep doing this. Are you looking at, at, you know, a few years and then saying, okay, we did our retail expansion. I think, yeah. I'm, I think I'm going to take a break. Or is this like, is this kind of like the funnest time that you've had up to this point? This is totally the most fun I've ever had because it so aligns with who I am. My background is a recon Marine infantry guy and just with all the gear. Yeah. Right. You know, just taking ideas like we had today at lunch. How about a Hawaiian shirt with amazing camouflage patterns? <laughs> we would love Nobody's that. done that. <laughs> God, so I get to go back to the that. product group yeah. and say, I have an idea. <laughs> if they don't like it, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait. I can't wait for my tiger stripe Hawaiian. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> but we're not doing the pink JT. I'm sorry. Damn it. You, know, oh, damn you guys it. always got to take a piece of my dream and just stop I would it. say the the hard thing about this role unlike working at a Panda Express which was a billion dollar company or Taco Bell which is a five billion dollar company we're much smaller not unlike where you guys are where if something needs to get done you look around left right uh oh oh I gotta do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you're never off <laughs> no. you're always on which is a good feeling most of the time, but occasionally, like, I just want to be off. Can I just shut my brain down? Yeah. <laughs> how, well, how, how much are you working? Like, how much are you on the road? Um, how much are you working, working? Well, I was at an FBI National Academy retrainer over the weekend up in Quebec. Mm -hmm. I left my house a week ago Wednesday. So this is, what day is today? Thursday. Wow. <laughs> so, so this okay. is day eight of a nine right. to ten day trip. So that's not unusual in a month. So, so once I hit the road, I, I stay on the road. 50% of your month or 30%? 60, about 60. Wow. You, you know it's not good when you call home to catch up with your wife and she's running around with a kid screaming in the background. She says, this single parent stuff is really difficult. <laughs> yeah. For anybody who's married out there, that might be what they call law enforcement a clue. It's like, <laughs> I'm really pissed off. I just I just had that conversation with my wife la last week actually. She's like, she's like, being a single parent is hard. I'm like, no. <laughs> being a sole income provider is hard too. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to make it so everybody else can spend it. But uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I certainly couldn't be the primary caregiver at home. No, no. My children, all three daughters, would have been killed by now. Well, they would have killed me too, for sure. Like I, I probably would. Have, it's way more stress for me for like a year, one year old. Yeah, like I can't feed. I rather, I rather have somebody yelling at me and breathing down my neck than having to listen <laughs> to a child cry. Nobody yells at you or breathes down your neck here. And I didn't say that they did. No. I just say I would rather that would than rather, listen would rather? to a child cry. <laughs> but in terms of travel. I actually love to travel. I don't mm. like being away from home. Yeah. So you got to deal with that conflict. But, you know, just the opportunity to be here, drop in with you guys, catch up. You can't do that over the phone. You can't do that no. on a Skype call. It's not no. the same. It's not the same. I don't like I don't like any of that anyway. I'm not a big I have to use it just based on necessity, I but I like having conversations with people. I think I think we, I think we should start, you know, a, a quarterly product dev, you know, meeting, <laughs> you know, where we have lunch like we did and we talk about things we wish we could buy. What's not in the line? <laughs> it's not in the line. I, I think we also talked about flip flops. So if oh, you, I'm if you haven't heard about this, you've heard today for the first time that Five Eleven will make a flip flop. Wow. 
Wow. I just decided. Oh, that. you just decided. Yes. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. I saw your flip flops. And mine. <laughs> he came in and he, he looked at me and then he looked at Dave and he's like, well. Oh, uh, well. Okay. There's white space in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Attack. <laughs> But does it need to be a tactical flip flop? Yes, it does. And what makes it tactical? Can it have Maybe a bottle opener like on it? Dyema or is Dyneema. it Dyneema? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever right. Dyneema is. Yeah. Some magical D- scientific. DSM thing. Dyneema. It's the strongest fiber that we've created up to this point. How about that? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll put a hit of that on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I think that'll make it sell. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, it could be. 1050 D nylon or something. So. Well, if they're Dyneema, Dyneema's positively buoyant, so then your flip-flops Ooh. float. I was also thinking, how about really grippy soles on the flip-flop? Yeah, flop? like, like stealth makes, leather? Yeah, no, nobody or makes... Or stealth rubber? Right. Yeah, exactly. so you can the climb. Squeak. Yeah. What's a stealth rubber? I don't stealth rubber is for climbers. It, 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 it sticks. Right. Oh. So like climbing shoes is made yeah. out of the stealth rubber, and it, okay. it conforms and lets you grip on... It's how people climb like bricks and shit. Man, I, I think, I, as long as we're talking about products that I think you should make, uh, I think you need to make a whole, you, you should team up with TRX and some of these other guys to make a whole 511 workout, workout line. line. Like, I think... Fitness equipment? Yes. Like, yes, because I see... Push-up bars, push-up well, bands. It's, it's, it's tactical, specific workout equipment. So it's, right. it's built for the tactical athlete. I see the weight travel bus? with that you pack it up. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It can yeah. fit. It fits in a yeah. case that you throw in your ruck when you know you're going, right. you know, somewhere for a while. But you got your little mini gym in your bag. Mm-hmm. It's actually a good idea. Great idea. I love it. I, I mean, because I was a tactical athlete for many years. Now right. I'm just kind of a a fat person. <laughs> um, <laughs> fat but it executive. Was, you, you, you know, I have kettlebells and I have all this stuff at my disposal at a fire base, you know, rowers and right. everything. And we, we would be modifying and welding and doing all these crazy things. But the things that I was looking at was like, okay, what, what is our mission? And then how do I take my mission and then modify my workout? So I'm, I'm becoming more effective at what we're doing, you know? the strength and conditioning aspect was always something. So uh, flipping a kettlebell isn't necessarily something that's going to make you a more effective, uh, uh, especially at the ground level trigger puller, right? right. It's going to do a lot of different things. But you look like a badass doing a Turkish get up. You do. Yeah. You do look like a badass, but getting your kid on and working in it, that's the only right. thing that's like, how do you prepare? <laughs> of course you do deadlifts and rows and everything right. else, but we would run out, to uh, our range, actually, Jeff and I, you remember Jeff, uh, my, my partner from Ready Man. Right. We would run out, we would throw frags, and then we would do a whole series of circuit circuit training with our kit on, you know, up and down hills and sure. do you whatever need the else th- we could the do. the frag throwing in there? Yeah, yeah, because, <laughs> like, we, we just... Gets the heart rate up a little higher. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you never want to be in that situation where you're like, man, I haven't thrown one of these for, like, fucking two months. I hope I get this where I need it to be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to go forward, yeah. because not backward. It, it never seemed to work out. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm i going to have to throw one do of you these. Have a perfect, do you have a perfect grenade story? Like, you, like where you got it, where you wanted it to be? No, I don't, oh, no. Damn it. I've never... Just got to get close. Yeah, just got to get close. I like the roll. The roll, yeah. There's the roll. There's the, there's the, there's the uh, not the chip shot, but the bank shot. I'm going to bank it off that, oh, the wall in the alley. And right. it's, get it it's around not, the corner. It's not going to work. It's, it's not going to bounce gonna work. back. Right. It just rolled back at you. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, yeah, I think that there's a whole line of, of really interesting things in there, especially with TRX. Don't you know those guys? Randy Hetrick, yeah, former Navy SEAL, great guy, super inventor, yeah. built a nice business there. Yeah, really cool guy. That's a that's a anyway. I, that's a totally different. Uh, I think you guys do need to get into that. I've but, always wanted to do a portable kettlebell. Have you seen yeah. any good ones? You know, Jeff and I worked on one for probably a year where we could try to where it was like filling it with water or, or sand. sand. Yeah. You know, we did, we did a ton of stuff with that. We actually made this thing. Do you remember that JT, the ball? 
Yeah, the yeah. the skin. Yeah, ball we made skins. it ball skin, and it was like we just ball skin. That's what we that's what we named it. Ball sounds skins. like something you do at a fob. Yeah, exactly. That's why that's why we <laughs> came up with it. But it was uh, it was basically just the outer shell of a medicine ball that you could fill up with right. anything you want, and then you tie it back together. And then eventually, I was like, well, this is so much fucking work, and nobody <laughs> wants to fill up their own medicine ball. Like no, literally nobody. Yeah. But right. I like I liked it because you could grab the top half, so you'd only fill it up. It's called it three quarters, and you could grab the top half like a kettlebell and swing it, and swing it, and that way you have to hold onto the fabric like a yeah. gi or something like sure. that. Work on the so grip the handle grips, was just yeah. was just the the actual fabric. So that's what that was my idea. Did uh, you trademark ball skin? I did. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. if I got yeah. to work on a product with you, I'd love to design like the be all end all RTO bag because there's been a lot of variants, but they all suck. Whoever was whoever was in charge of it's like they didn't even have the radio with them when they when they did the design <laughs> of the bag. It's like I remember we got we got these new bags in 2000. Uh, eight or nine that's like they finally designed this bag for 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 the 117 and and we put the radio in and the antenna the antenna holes are in the wrong spot oh, and it's geez. just like all right we're going back to square one cutting holes in the top of our bags to get the antenna the nylon yeah. yeah so it wouldn't keep <laughs> ripping classic mm. let's do it i'm in yeah <laughs> put it on the list we'll Put on our flip flops, we'll Hawaiian Lamb shirts, it out. and do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do a commercial with the Hawaiian shirts and the new uh, be all end all RTO bag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's really how our product development process works. We just start with what do you have with your kit that you don't like or isn't getting the job done. Good right. example with that uh, of that would be we just came out with a Oxford shoe because we're dealing with a lot of SWAT guys and FBI agents yeah. who have to run after people occasionally. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it in a Cole Haan or some other dress shoe that's got no grip on the sole and doesn't stay attached to their foot. So they round a corner, blow out of the shoe, wipe out, yard sale, crazy stuff. You're, what you're saying is why I never understood police uniforms. Right. Like, why? They're made for parades. Yeah. Why, why aren't you wearing stuff that you're going to chase somebody and right. wrestle them in? Exactly. Like, <laughs> you should be in full-on athletic gear. Like, like, yeah, specifically police shoes. Like, there's some sure. of them are dress shoes. They're like right. cock yeah. rents. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're not going after anybody in those. And if you try, you're fucking yourself over. <laughs> like, you're going to die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so with our new Oxford, it's got a, a Vibram outsole, real grippy, but stealth. So you can walk on a tile floor, makes no noise. Really? Ninja style. You can sneak Whoa. up on people. I want to try these the ninja grip. shoes. And then it's got a D3 O midsole, which is that kind of shock absorbing sheer polymer. It's got a little bit of rebound to it. Right. They're literally more comfortable than most of my athletic shoes. Really? Now, I know you guys don't wear Oxford, so I won't no. bother sending you any. Oh, I know. No. I want to try these now. Then you say they're ninja shoes. Totally. N- ninja <laughs> <I'm> dress <sold>. shoes. <laughs> ninja dress shoes. <laughs> That's what it's about. Yeah, they'll be in the stores in about a month. I really like you guys' new low cut like hiking boots that you guys that you guys came out with this year. Those are sharp. Yeah, we've got a couple of those. New oh, models. they're freaking great looking, and they, I tried them on at the store. They yeah, I think you nice. like the Apex. I think that's the model you're in. Yeah, it's like an A Solo. Yes, yeah. exactly. It it was it was awesome. And we've got another one that's got more nylon on it called the Union. Mm-hmm. That's just coming out now. All right. Got to have the gear. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're ready for any mission. This is a catalog. I love this. <laughs> so where are you going next? You're going to Austin, and then where are you? And then are you back in Cali? Me personally or with the store program? You personally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to California tomorrow, get home Friday night, leave for Hawaii on a one-week yep. vacation Sunday. And I'm not taking a vacation in a year. Wow. Not good. Yeah, that's not I'm good. I'm due. Yeah. That's why if you see a little nervous twitch on my right <laughs> eye from lack of vacation and sleep. Are you yeah. gonna, are, are, are you leaving your phone? Totally shutting down the electronics. Are you, you really? Yeah. You're going, oh, you're yeah. going full, yeah. full black. Yeah. Love that. Full Won't black. even carry a wallet. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Man. Just going to barter. Yeah, just going to barter. Just going to wear a bunch of gold, gold rings. I think and just... my wife will have money. <laughs> have no her... credit card, no phone. Yeah, perfect. Live off the land. It's yeah. Hawaii. It's yeah. Hawaii. You can do that. You need mm. things that are right near you. Yeah, fish Push and down, coconuts and papayas. You've you got, got it everything all. you need. All right. Well, but what are you doing with 5.11 next? What are your big things outside of retail that you guys are 
because you're you're going to be at the CrossFit Games, obviously. Next week, CrossFit Games, Madison, Wisconsin. Always okay. an exciting event. Yeah. We'll have a big team out there. Uh, the Tech Tech Plate Carrier has kind of become the CrossFit vest of mm-hmm. choice for a weight vest. We're doing right now on social media weight vest Wednesday workouts. Nice. So check those out if you haven't seen them. They're a lot of fun. But we will be introducing for the first time ever our new hex grid tech tech plate carrier at the CrossFit game. So okay. maybe a secret. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it. But one of the workouts will involve our new hex grid plate carrier. Wow. And the thing is badass looking. Really? Oh yeah. Beautiful I'm piece of kit. What what what's hex grid? What, what so hex grid is uh, our take on a replacement for Molly. Okay. So we looked at every geometric shape that might give you different angles of attack relative to Molly, where mm-hmm. you can only go horizontal or vertical. Right. So triangles, uh, heptagons, sectagons, you name it. But hex grid, so six sided shape, ended up being the best to be backward compatible with all the pouches. Huh. And it looks great. And the other big innovation, I've got it on my backpack. Uh, it's out in the car. It's not here. You can't look at it. We finally figured out a way to take the attachment system away from the substrate of the platform it's on. So anybody who's put gear on a Molly platform knows you shred your pedicure, JT. Yeah. You shred up everything. It takes takes you know, a whole day to assemble your kit. It could take a whole day. You need needle yeah. nose pliers, all that. And then it's if you want to change horrible. a pouch, it's a nightmare. You yeah. put that off as long as you can. But ours is now removable. Huh. So you basically take the hex grid off, kit up your pouches, takes you five or 10 minutes, hang it on the wall. You can have two or three for different mission sets. And then the G hooks onto the platform and you cinch it down with a strap. Oh, cool. So big innovation there. We thought we had it with just the shape. Right. And we had a bunch of guys go down range and say, eh, you need to work on something. And right. ended up being to allow you to detach from the platform. That's okay. amazing. So Got that, it. That's big. And that's again, brand new in the stores right now. Huh. All right, well, check out the grand opening of the Austin store. And then do you guys have publish a schedule for when you guys are doing your, your, your openings? We do on the, the 511 cities? Facebook site. All right. 511 at Facebook, and then check them out. What's Instagram. the uh, URL? URL is uh, www.511tactical.com for the main site. You'll also see it there, or 511 Tactical on Facebook. Perfect. Beautiful. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank right. you, Tom.